Howdy, everyone. My name's Nicholas, and welcome to the Headliner Pod Pod. We're a show about podcasts featuring podcasts by podcasters that's hosted by people who help podcasters with their podcasting. On each episode, a few of us folks over at Headliner sit down to play a game that centers around listening to randomly selected clips from over 500 show submissions. Why? Because we're searching for something we like to call Pod Zero. Here are the rules. Each lucky contestant will hear a 60-second podcast clip. Then, they'll need to pick out the correct podcast title from a lineup of three choices before being shown the artwork for that show. Before we get this show on the road, though, let's say hi to each of our contestants for today. Starting with Oliver. Hello, hello. Welcome to 2024. <laughs> That's right, it's New Year's. I completely forgot for a sec there. Next, we have Max. Hiya. Followed by Christy. Let's uh, let's go. <laughs> How NPR of you. Jesse. Woohoo, everybody. <laughs> and Ratik. I feel like I needed a golf clap after that. Hey, everyone. And as always, we have Alyssa playing the role of producer. Actually, not as always, because last week we didn't, but that's fine. Yes, yes. I'm back in Nashville, no longer in California. How unfortunate. <laughs> Before we get into the actual show itself, though, we do have a little tiny itsy bitsy ad read. And Max, you were so gracious as to point out that we should talk about something. So why don't you do it for today? Why don't you tell us what's up at Headliner? Sure. So this is an ad for Headliner. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of it. Pretty cool app. Helps you with your podcast. Happens to be the podcast you're listening to as well. So we just did a pretty an update to Eddie where there's a new option now when you upload audio that you can now personalize all of the AI generations to your podcast. So you select your podcast during the upload step. Uh, this actually will work for video as well. And it's going to start learning from your RSS feed and adjust all the AI output like show notes and episode art to match what you've already been doing. So it'll see what your previous show notes look like and then try to replicate that style as best possible. And it's going to look at your cover art and figure out what colors you used. And then all the episode art it generates will be on brand using those same colors. So pretty fun. Try it out. Let us know what you think and more to come like that soon. Cool. Very interesting stuff. And like I said, before we hit record, I'm going to start using pig Latin a lot to try and throw it off its game. So without out of the way, Let's dive into things with our first clip, starting with Oliver, just to mix things up a bit. All right. I guess Oliver's pulling his beanie over his eyes. It appears so. <laughs> it's also, I do a lot of like brand partnerships and making sure that the execution of a brand partnership looks really great and it complements your brand and what you're doing. And we're not doing partnerships that don't make sense for your brand, right? Mm -hmm. So really a publicist, or somebody who works in PR is going to help you with everything that has to do with your image and your reputation. Yeah, yeah. So look, I'm going to put you in the spot for a moment, okay? okay? And I want you to tell me this. If I'm an elite athlete, either in high school or college, mm -hmm. why should I be thinking about getting myself a PR manager? But most importantly, I want you to tell me how can I benefit from the expertise of a public relations manager? Yeah, that's really good. I think a lot of times, especially in this new space of NIL, right? We're like, oh, I'm really good. And I should be able to get NIL deals, right? And it just doesn't work like that, right? Okay. I guess we'll never know if it works like that or not. It sounds like it doesn't, but it does. We'll just... Okay. I'm glad to hear Oliver was listening because I, I totally spaced out for a sec there. Let's find out what this show is titled with our favorite game. Pick the right title. I don't know. We don't have a better name for it. All right. Your first choice, Oliver, is Field Goals for the Focus Driven Athlete. Your second one, Business Tips for Athletes. And your third, Mile Markers and Mindful Moguls. Mile? Okay. Well, the podcast was clearly about... PR branding. There was mention of elite athletes. I think that the correct answer is option number three, mile markers and 
mindful moguls Mo moguls Mo ski moguls <laughs> I'm not sure if they're ski moguls in particular, but I am pretty confident in saying that you are unfortunately wrong getting no. the year off with me winning was the it first field round. Goals? It, it was, was it was field goals for oh. the focus driven athlete. Well, that's just nuts because maybe in 2024, I should be going with my, my initial thought. As you know, my method is to throw out the one I initially think is the right <laughs> choice. I did that for field goals. First time ever on the podcast, my gut instinct was correct. And now everything is into question for 2024. It's just, it's just setting the pattern down for the next 12 months. All right. So yeah, field goals for the focus driven athlete was the correct answer. The excerpt we just listened to was from episode 45, Why Athletes Need PR Management with Des Dickerson, not to be mistaken with Des Dickerson, the guitarist for Prince and the Revolution back in the day. And here's our show description. Field Goals for the Focus Driven Athlete, hosted by Glenn Hames, is the number one podcast for elite amateur athletes in high school and college who are looking for tips and strategies that will give them a competitive edge to help them achieve their on and off the field court athletic goals. Whether you play football, basketball, soccer, or any other active team sport, either on the field or court, industry experts, Coaches and former professional athletes will provide insightful tips and share their personal experiences on topics that are important to the elite amateur athlete who has the focus and drive to play sports competitively at the highest level of competition. Okay. That is a very descriptive description. It's an A-plus description, and it says everything you need to know about the show. I don't know how many of us are elite amateur athletes in high school or college anymore, but... If anyone listening is, there is a show that you might want to check out sometime. And it has some pretty cool artwork, too. I mean, you, you got to love that episode art. Custom art's the best. Jumping forward to our second clip for the day. Let's go with Christy. Let's do it. All righty. Aquellas organizaciones pseudo defensoras de los derechos sociales, pseudo defensoras de un orden social justo, no son realmente defensoras de los más pobres. Son defensoras de un sistema, de un orden de cosas que busca trascender en el tiempo para someter a las gentes del mundo al dominio de unos pocos. No hay nada nuevo en el comunismo. Es una forma más de opresión tiránica sobre los individuos. Es una deformación, un empeoramiento del sistema capitalista. China comunista, sin el capitalismo, no hubiese progresado como ha progresado. Ok. I hope you were listening closely, Christy. Uh, this is I all, actually this is, a, this is a trick this is this is like what is what is going on here what is this you guys <laughs> <laughs> what is this you guys did this I'll, on purpose <laughs> i'll tell you what we did do it on purpose but there's even a trick in there for me because this is our third clip and not our second i Incredible. clicked the wrong button <laughs> you get you get double jeopardy christy because now we have to figure out if i'm smart enough to read the correct title now oh wow yeah so Let's see what happens there. And I'm going to do you a solid because I don't want to stumble on my face and just mispronounce a bunch of words in Spanish. I'm going to read the English versions of the titles for you. <laughs> okay? okay. Because otherwise, it's going to look a lot like a Cybertruck crash in the sense that there's zero crumple and a lot of carnage. Awesome. So let's do it. Your first choice is simply interesting. Your second choice is wonderfully amazing. And the third one is incredibly interesting i'm all right i'm going simply interesting okay do you want to do you have any logic behind that any train of thought um i think that if i was going to pick a podcast name and i was these people i would have done that i think there's just like sure i, I think i would i think i'm right in that aspect <laughs> okay Simply interesting is correct. Yes! Oh my god, I wrote my string. It's the one, the one that's not even in a language I speak. The one that is like, what is? 
you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm happy to hear that you're you're pleased that you won. My only note, Alyssa, is that I would have named the other two wonderfully wonderful and incredibly incredible. But, oh, that's good. Well, yeah. feel, feel free. That to would have given away. In the future. Yeah. My dog is very happy that I that I you know that I did good. <laughs> All righty then. So, what y'all just heard was from the episode "Between Two Destructive Forces: Palestinians in the Gaza Strip." And here is our show description for Simply Interesting, translated into English. Let's look together for the topics that interest you most and create an option about them. Today, there are facts that deserve to be clarified. It is here that alternative means of information appear to enrich our knowledge. Let's read new information. Let's take a path towards an adventure in which each personal or historical event can, and in fact is, Simply Interesting. So there you have it. Just some good, classic, simple podcast art. All you need is a picture of a host, a nice red border on the bottom, and then the words, you know? Also good good font matching. I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, Are you Max. Sure that's the host? I mean, we can assume it's the host, right? I think it's stock imagery. It, okay. Yeah, it could just be stock imagery. You're right. That's on me. If that was the host, that'd be an amazing profile picture that, like, if would... you ever got a LinkedIn request from <laughs> somebody with this photo, I'd be, I'd, you know, that, that's fair enough. Point. For everyone listening, it's a man with both of his hands on his, like, cheeks, and he's holding, like, a TV remote. He's just, he's interested, simply put, he's interested. So, that out of the way. Max, how about we put you in the hot seat, and we'll go with our second clip that we jumped over Let's and I, I'm gonna I take didn't... my glasses off because I'm pretty blind without them and now I can't see it so there you go perfect awesome I did pre-check this and I'm confirming it is clip number two this time Nicholas okay. <laughs> and if they were going to see these same changes they could say that chimpanzee females go through a quote-unquote human-like menopause and they found that based on these hormonal measures that female chimps at Ngogo do experience this hormonal transition around age 50, similar to the menopause that we see in humans. This discovery it, it is so astounding to me. And like she said, it's only possible with the long-term data, like you find out in Gogo, and with scientists there all the time, like asking new questions about these amazing chimps. Because chimps live, chimps live a long time, especially out in Gogo. And it's interesting too, because they live for this long time and they reproduce so slowly that we wouldn't know anything about chimps without these long-term studies. They're essential because we're still learning the basic things about their lives and their biology. Okay. So here are your options, Max. Number one origin stories number two evolutionary times number three why we are the way we are hmm. they do the head scratcher mm -hmm. well i'm gonna go with the third one just because it sticks out and it's podcasts I'd want to listen to, to know why I am the way I am. And hope Same somebody Max. can give me an explanation one day because, you know, always, always struggled with that question. Why Same. do I do these things? Same. I've had that screamed at me many a time over the holidays. Oh, yeah. So, unfortunately, the answer will not be coming to us today, Max, because it's origin stories. Sorry. Leaky Foundation. Pretty sure I know that foundation. Hmm. But I kind of forgot it if I do or not. But yeah, it sounds like a good podcast. Definitely one I would listen to and collect random facts and then annoy them, annoy people at parties or something with, as I usually do. I love to just learn surface knowledge about random things and, and from podcasts and pretend like I actually know what I'm talking about. Same. I'm a lot like Cliff from Cheers in that regard. Or that meme of the guy in the corner going, nobody realizes that chimps live a really long time. So. They reproduce slowly. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Oh my goodness, really? 
Yeah. <laughs> Learned it from a okay. podcast. Nice. So that clip we just listened to is from the episode Top Human Origin Discoveries of 2023. And here's our show description. This award-winning show combines science and narrative to explore our human story and explain why we are the way we are. Listen and explore human evolution one story at a time. Cool stuff. Yeah, I'm actually going to save that one because I'm a bit of a science nerd. I mean, I'm a bit of a nerd nerd in general, but that's that's right up my alley. I'm pretty sure this is like a, a massive foundation or like, let's see, who's the founder? I, I think this is like a really, what's the word? Like respected foundation. So it's pretty cool that they use headliner. That is Who's pretty cool. Leaky? Right. So, wow. Our users Wait, the, cr the creator's name awesome. is Leaky? Really? Yeah, it's the, it's the last name of the okay. founder or the uh, researcher, I guess, who had fired the foundation. Because I definitely like heard about this foundation before. So it, hmm. it's pretty crazy they use headliner. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And I was going to make a joke about the founder's name being like Benjamin Leakey or something. And now I'm I'm taken aback by the fact that that was actually true in its own way. That's so interesting and cool. OK, Lewis S. B. Leakey, a pioneering scientist and passionate advocate of science outreach. Getting the word out through headliner audiograms. Cool. Jumping forward to our next contestant, we have Pratik. Awesome. We've got Pratik covering his face with a get well soon balloon. Thank you for announcing that because I could not see Pratik and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's hardly a shocking position because I don't think when, when Greta Gerwig made Barbie and, and wrote the script with Noah Baumbach, I don't think they're thinking 50 year old white men and that's who we need to get. That's our target audience. That said, I mean, I was a huge fan of Greta Gerwig's other two movies that she directed, Lady Bird and Little Women, which I watched again over Christmas and bawled my eyes out at, at all the right moments. Maybe some of the wrong moments. Again, close to a perfect picture. I picked uh, close to a perfect movie, I think. And I just couldn't see the point of, of Barbie, even though it was all very wink, wink, all very meta, all very postmodern, all very we're in on the joke, all very, this is what Barbie represented. Okay, there's our clip. So Pratik, here are your three options for today. Number one is behind the scenes. Number two, deep cuts. And number three, the clear out. Mm. Well, I'm going to eliminate the third one just because it doesn't sound like it's movie analysis related, which this clip felt like to me. What was the first one again? Behind the scenes. Let's go down behind the scenes. Okay. First choice behind the scenes is incorrect. It was ah, actually the clear out. And I realized I should have told you clear out was one word. It totally would have made all the difference. That's on me. Yeah. Thank you, Pratik. The episode we just listened to a clip from was 2023, the year in screen time, fantastic plastic and artistic brutality. Good, good pun there on fantastic plastic. It's, I think it's a reference to the movie Fantastic Planet. Funny. And our our show description is, oh, are you a fan of that movie, Christy? That's a really good movie. <laughs> it's it in be. the Barbie it's a, it's a song. Good... Yeah. Oh, is it really? I didn't even realize yeah. that. Made it a plastic. It's fantastic. Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh. Whatever. Yeah. So our show description is, welcome to the turbulence. Join Dara Clear, a domesticated Irishman who's trying to work out the best ways to cope with what life throws at him. Husband, father, Actor, writer, teacher, karate instructor, and sea swimmer, Dara wants to take the wuss out of wellness. Mixed storytelling, philosophy, humor, psychology, and emotional honesty as a recipe for increased wellness, positivity, and resilience. Okay. So it does sound like the clear out makes more sense because this is about more than just movies. 
without a Happy. domesticated Irishman. Yes. Weird way to introduce yourself. <laughs> like our most, it's like when I heard that, I was like, are, are you saying most Irish men are not domesticated? I didn't even look at it that way. I just thought to myself, what happens if I meet an undomesticated person? Like, what's that? What's going to happen there? You know, I guess I would just get wild. <laughs> yeah. Watch out for those ones. Exactly. So pretty cool stuff. I'm always here for the Greta Gerwig love. I literally watched a million of her movies over the holidays. Her movies with her husband, Noah Baumbach, are awesome. So let's move on to the next contestant. Jesse. Are you ready? I'm ready. Cool. Let's see if you can get this one. Can we take a moment to realize and appreciate how much decision fatigue you're going to be sparing your people? Sitting there just taking a little, like a quick glance at some numbers and being able to make a decision on the spot instead of agonizing inside your head and collecting the information, going through it, filtering it out, seeing what would work and what wouldn't, and then debating about it for God knows how long. That's massive. Oh my God, like, that's really, really impressive, Jane. Great work. Okay, so tell me this. Yeah. If someone is listening to us today and they don't know if Inside Fashion Membership is the thing for them, like, who is this created for? Who's the person who needs that membership right here, right now, because I know a lot of people need it. Well, I think that anybody who is involved in the global apparel supply chain uh -huh. would find it useful. All righty. Here are your options. Number one, it takes two. Number two, a seat at the table. And number three, business mindset. And just to specify, because I flubbed it with critique, mindset is two words this time. Oh, okay, okay. It takes two seat at the table and business mindset. So it sounds like uh, we're I'm leaning more towards uh, the bottom two. They ha <laughs> there's a theme here: a seat at the table and business mindset. These are both. They're talking about ways to, for people to be able to advance their career in the fields that they're covering each week. So. I, I'm kind of leaning more toward number two. Hmm. A seat at the table. A seat at the table. All right. Well, Jesse, you're correct. It is a seat at the table. Start I was really right. hoping you would pick it takes two because then I could be coy and be like, technically you're right because it's the second one. But... Uh, we can re-roll this and I could do that if you like. No, it's joke. cool. The moment's <laughs> gone. He still got to say the joke. so he's Yeah, I got, I got to say the joke. I'm fine. The episode we just heard an excerpt from is Coping with Information Overload. And our show description is Top international business leaders, entrepreneurs, innovators, and authors share their experience, insights, and outlook on how to drive business growth, build better companies, new fast-growing technologies, and where the next big opportunities are. So, pretty interesting stuff. And we have a nice little bit of episode art, too. Always, always appreciate it. And now I believe everyone's already gone. So as always, we'll put you all on a team and just have you fight it out for a few minutes. Let's do this. This is the part where having an undomesticated teammate might be a hindrance for the record. So let's cover our eyes. All right. I see the beanie. Christy. Christy. Oh, he has a beanie too. Nice. <laughs> That's teamwork. <laughs> and when we were listening to his radio, it seemed like the helicopter took a while. I don't know if that man's okay. I don't know. I don't know anything about the story. I care to know more because I don't plan on doing it. Yeah. Been with people, <clears throat> my ex, who don't want to use crosswalks. They think that it's okay to just Charity. run just <laughs> run out into traffic if they're if they think it's safe. I don't like that. I've been around a few people that do that, and they're like, oh, but we could go now, but we could go now. Or we could just take a couple more minutes, go to the crosswalk, and have a better chance of getting across safely. I remember when I was in Richmond with my aunt for the live orchestra of viewing of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. We were in a college area, and it was nothing but jaywalkers. There was, there was no moving through traffic. It was just people crossing wherever they wanted. It was a college thing, I guess. But It's like Gatlinburg. 
Oh God, Gallo Burke. People get it. Jesse, was that you? <laughs> no, it's not me. But I was sitting there thinking, I was like, they sound like they're from like North Carolina or Virginia or, or something over there. And then they I said, thought this was a trick. I thought this was you. <laughs> you thought we recorded? We had Jesse come into a booth and just do. <laughs> yeah. Solid minute and amusing about Star Wars and orchestras. <laughs> Valid. <laughs> it was Gatlinburg. It was Star Wars. I was like, dude, there's this is green flag, green flag, green flag. <laughs> <laughs> or his alter, his secret alter ego that he doesn't tell us about. He's a podcast yeah. host. Look, they had great Whoa. takes. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, these, <laughs> these are my new friends. <laughs> that was, was the Ron Urkel Swanson's... to Jesse Zirkel. So, what was Ron Swanson's alter ego? On um, Duke Silver. Duke, Duke Silver. Silver. It's your Duke Silver, Jesse. We're on to you. There you go. Don't you play the saxophone or is that the trumpet? I play the trumpet. Okay, close enough. Brass instrument. Yeah, you know. So no, 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 no. No, Jesse, <laughs> help them out here. They're they're Look, not even because the it's same made family. out of metal. It's it's the mouthpiece that makes a brass reed. instrument. Yeah. Okay. I've been thoroughly put in my place. You heard it here, folks. The saxophone has wood in it. <laughs> There's wood a, in the it's saxophone. a wood There's wind. wood in that wind. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> you learn something new every day. I played string. Nice. Here we go. Here are your options for today. Number one, horrific history and hauntings. Number two, spooky stuff and such. And number three, terrifying tidbits and tales. Man, Alyssa, you're too good at this. <laughs> what was the first one again? Horrific history and hauntings. I really like the last one, but I don't. I feel like that's definitely not. It's it, got Alyssa vibes. She got to use the word tidbit. Tidbit is a great. Was it terrifying tidbits? Yes. yes. It's just and tales. Great, like they just yep. cancel each other out. Like you can't have a terrifying tidbit. A tidbit is never. That sounds. That sounds like the name of a horse. Terrifying tidbits and yeah. tales. <laughs> I think it's out. That's the horse from Sleepy Hollow, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's spooky stuff is the second one. I'm down for spooky stuff. What Anyone is, else? How, the podcast was like about jaywalking. I don't even understand. Well, all all three are, are, are so it's, it's the first one's horrible, and then terrifying, horrible, spooky, and then terrifying, right? HST. Mm -hmm. Horrific. Okay, horrific. I feel like it was less spooky. That changes it. Jaywalking. It's, it's they're well, all they were, scary. they were talking about safety in jaywalking, Max. Right. Which is have you ever been is... to Gatlinburg and driving? Yeah. It is terrifying. <laughs> there are a lot of jaywalkers. I couldn't Don't recommend. It's, it's actually illegal not to jaywalk in New York, so I couldn't relate. You get a ticket for walking across the crosswalk. You have to jaywalk here. It's a law. It's so, true. It's just the law. They have cameras so at every I... intersection that checks. That's why I was like, doesn't sound spooky to me. Just sounds like the law that I follow every day in New York. <laughs> Anyways, I have nothing constructive to add here. I don't know. If somebody else should decide. Yes. Does anyone have any ideas what it could be? I could read the episode title. It won't give it away, but it'll stall for time. Okay. The episode. Spooky's down for spooky stuff. Okay. Just, yeah. <laughs> the episode is Alphabet of Death, I through K in parentheses. Okay. That actually I, does seem helpful. Yeah. All right. So, so here's going to be my fever dream reasoning. So we got we got three letters. We've got the H, we got an S, and we got a T. It's alliteration. I think is the word they taught me in fourth grade. Um, the H's they all got right angles. S's are curved, and T's also got right angles. So the S's are the only thing different. We can go with S. Spooky stuff. I need to. I just. Cork board with all the strings that you've connected to your murder board. <laughs> he couldn't. Okay. Read. Do you want to apply any math? Any more math? I'm sorry. Sure. Not geometry. More statistical analysis. No, I'm trying to leave math behind in 2023. So you went well, to geometry. You're going with yeah, a different <laughs> form of math. All right, I won't doubt it. If you guys want to lock that in, that's your I'm, that's I'm your prerogative, Christy. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Spooky stuff and such is woefully incorrect. It was horrific history and hauntings. Uh, so sorry. The right angles were right all along. Yeah, check your math, Jesse. The formula was off. 
There that you go. You very, didn't carry the one. That was a very put your sunglasses on, Max. <laughs> you got to <laughs> check your math. <laughs> cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> and let's learn a little bit about this show really quick. Horrific History and Hauntings is a podcast that explores the dark and disturbing side of the past. From the supernatural and hauntings to gruesome crimes and atrocities in history, the hosts, Beth and Ramey, will take you on a journey through the most terrifying events in history. Each episode will feature a different topic, such as the Salem Witch Trials, True Crime, the Chernobyl Disaster, and other tragic disasters, both caused by humans and natural disasters. You'll hear facts, legends, theories, and opinions. We'll try to toss in some humor when appropriate as well. If you love horror, history, and mystery, this is the podcast for you. Warning, some episodes may contain graphic and disturbing content. Listener discretion is advised. Horror, history, and mystery, that, that should have been the title. I love the alliteration on history and mystery. So, very cool stuff. Also, some good artwork on there. I just, I like that, like, Rembrandt skull on the ground there. It's very, very neat. Anyway, that brings us to the end of our episode. We have exhausted all of our clips. Thank you to everyone who's listened to the Headliner Pod Pod. Thank you to everyone who's listened to the Headliner Pod Pod this week. And I hope you have a good one. Bye.